Well, hello everyone, Merry Christmas, and welcome to my glamorous studio, aka my garden shed. Um, this is probably the warmest place in my house today, so that's why I'm sat in here, and Merry Christmas, because if you do celebrate it, today is Christmas Day, and as promised, I said today I would answer some questions you guys have asked over the past weeks or so on my channel. So let's get into it. So question number one from Flynn Bellamy Cars, and can I just say, Flynn Bellamy Cars, I noticed you commenting a lot, really lovely and positive comments, so thank you so much, it doesn't go unnoticed. Your question says, can't wait for the Q&A, well here you go, what cars besides another Range Rover are you planning to buy? So I guess sticking to that category, the ones that come to mind initially are the Porsche Cayenne, which if you saw my video maybe a month or two ago with that car, you'll know how keen I was on that. VW Touareg, I love the Land Rover Discovery 3, the really old boxy one, uh, Discovery 4 also, but the 3 is much, obviously much cheaper, and maybe Volvo XC90 as well. I've definitely got a few of all of those cars in my watch list uh, at the moment, so thank you so much uh, for your question, and Merry Christmas. Callum G has asked, do you have any plans or interest in doing more mechanical jobs slash repairs, perhaps a project series where you learn as you go along? <sighs> this is a really tricky one because I think, ultimately, I would love to be more mechanically able. Take a channel like M539 Restorations in Germany. I would love to be able to do the sort of stuff that he does on his channel, buying wrecked cars from abroad for great prices and just completely mechanically overhauling them. The truth of the matter is I'm, I'm not that clever. And I think, although you can't start with everything, you have to start from somewhere, it is really tricky at the moment where you know, my, my cars, the only parking I've got is a sloped driveway. It's very public, very open. So working on the cars here is particularly difficult, let alone filming it as well. It draws up all sort of looks from my neighbors and, and questions. So uh, in an ideal world, I, I absolutely in the future would love to be able to do more of the mechanical stuff myself. I think I just, I'm gonna work really hard, hopefully to the point where I can maybe rent a unit once a week or something and 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 have a car up on a ramp and then you know teach myself from there but um, although yes I would love to do that I think logistically it's a little bit challenging at the moment um, and that is also very time consuming and also when I only have sort of one car on the channel the last thing I want to do is try and do a cowboy repair on it myself and break it because then all of a sudden my business and my content is unusable so um, I hope that sort of answers your question in a very, very convoluted way. But thank you so much for asking. And if you do celebrate Christmas, Merry Christmas to you, Callum. Question, thoughts on which late 1990s slash early 2000s cars are about to become or already are modern classics? Um, first one that comes into mind is a Ferrari 456. They can still be picked up for sort of as little as 30 grand at times and I don't think that's gonna last for a long time. That would be for a V12 manual as well. V12 manual Ferrari, it was the predece predecessor, what's the, the it, it came before the 612 Scalietti. That car as well is another one that I don't think they're fully appreciated yet. So those two, I think are gonna go up in value. Also, it might just be into the 80s, but if you look at the Mercedes Pagoda, which is the 60s SL, they've gone crazy in value now. And I think the generation that came after that it's probably gonna follow suit the sort of 70s, 80s one, um, because you can still pick those up for sort of circa 10K. And if you look at Pagodas, they're 50 plus. So there's two that come to mind. Tomaz A123 says, you've got a budget of five grand. What car provides the best mix of luxury, reliability, affordability, and performance at that price point? Ooh, that, I mean, that's a very tricky question. Not based on experience, but based on things I've heard. I would probably say something like an old Lexus. Uh, is it the, the LS430, the big V8 sort of long saloon one? I reckon that's uh, luxurious, definitely. Probably very reliable, they're certainly affordable. And um, that big thumping, is it 4.6 V8 or something they have in those, puts out a good amount of power as well. So certainly if it was my money, five grand, I would certainly be looking down the Lexus route for all of those, uh, to tick all of those boxes. Maximus GT says, how did you find driving to the Nürburgring and any tips on driving from Eurotunnel to Nürburgring? Love your videos and keep up the good work. Thank you so much. Um, 
Driving to the Nürburgring, I'm trying to think back to the first time I did it. It was very, it's very straightforward. The Euro Tunnel is literally like, if you've ever been on a car ferry, it's no different to that. You book yourself a ticket, you go through a bit of passport control, and you drive, you drive onto a train. It's just not a boat. You drive onto a train, it takes 30 minutes, you come off the other end. Got to be super careful that you're driving on the, on the correct side of the road, which in France would be on the right. Is that correct? Don't take my advice. So you just got to be very cautious. And then actually, once you get onto the continent, you'll find that actually you want nothing less but then to be driving back in the UK because the roads and the drivers in France, even in Belgium, questionable, and Germany especially are, are fantastic all around the board. It gets even better when you go to places like Austria and Switzerland in terms of road quality. Um, so no no tips really other than just, just do it. Um, you know, you're never going to be comfortable doing it until you try it at least the first time. So get yourself a ticket on the Eurotunnel and, and just go for it. Seen by Drone says, do you enjoy video editing or do you see it as a necessary evil needed to do the fun part of driving and filming? Good question. Um, I do like video editing. I think um, in an ideal world, I wouldn't have to do it. I would be able to outsource it to someone else. But I think most of a video's ind individuality or, or a creator's, uh, YouTuber's style probably comes from, from the editing. You might be intrigued to know that I think my least favourite part of the whole process is, is actually doing the filming work myself, fiddling with these stupid cameras. No doubt this whole shot has been out of focus because my camera's not behaving itself, or more likely I don't really know how to use it. Um, I, do, I do enjoy the editing. I think in an ideal world, I'd actually have someone to help me film, as in to set the cameras up, to have a, a support car where they can get shots of, of cars on the road, things like that. A bit like what Alex Kirsten does with his Auto Alex channel has a really great guy that helps him with the filming on on that and as a result the production value is brilliant but as a presenter i would much prefer someone else to sort of help me with that as well i haven't really answered your question but in short i, I love the video editing i think that's where you give a video its feeling um, as opposed to sort of in other processes uh, too. So uh, thank you, Seen by Drone, for the question. I hope that sort of sort of answered it without going down too much of a of a rabbit hole. Morgan Morris says, if you had a choice between a one car garage or a two car garage, both options costing forty thousand pounds, what are you choosing and why? I hate these questions. Put me on the spot so much. Uh, when I get these questions, Morgan, I just panic. Um, 40 grand one car for 40 grand okay if i went down the, if i went down the one car garage route i'd probably get myself a nice lower mileage 2015 odd jaguar f type r i'd spend my 40 grand on that if i had to split it into two cars which i think i probably would i would go for a bmw m6 the e63 generation with a v10 spend around 15 grand on that in fact there's one up at the moment with 40,000 miles or something for 16k if I had the money, I would be buying that. So let's say E63 M6 and then my other 25 grand, I would buy the nicest L322 Range Rover. I'd buy a, a five litre autobiography, spend 25 grand on that, get one relatively low mileage, under 100K, a 2011 or 2012 model. That's where uh, my money would go. Great question, actually. TJ Panapa says, regarding flying, are you still wanting to get your PPL, private pilot's license? If so, have you done much aviating lately? For those of you that aren't aware, I've talked about it a little bit before about how I really love flying. That's like my sort of, probably my number one passion actually. I do have a flying channel, which I'll link up. Is it up here? I think it's up here or up here. I'll link that there. I'm, I'm currently um, making some videos for it at the moment, so bear with me. Um, but yeah, I love flying. Actually, I haven't done any more lessons since I last spoke about it, but I have applied for a pilot position with um, a certain company that's recruiting cadet pilots at the moment. So um, although I've not done any training myself, I'm definitely very much looking towards getting a job in, in aviation, as well as this YouTube channel as well, of course. This isn't going anywhere, but I have recently applied for a, an airline pilot job, um, which would be like a starting from scratch sort of position. So. Um, yeah, I'll keep you all updated on, on the other channel. Like I say, go and I never know which side to point at. It's there or there. Go and check out my Flying With Joel channel. That's where all the sort of aviation related stuff to do with me is, is gonna go. 
bear with me in the new year, I'll have some videos out, I promise. Reese 92 says, will you get another Range Rover in the fleet? Absolutely, absolutely adore Range Rovers. Um, so yes, 100%, there will be another Range Rover. Will it be my next car? Not sure, but there will be. It's always, it's always down to, to money. I'm essentially trying to run a business with this YouTube channel. So I'm trying to generate revenue from each car that I, I have for the channel. The Jaguar cost 1,400 quid. That was the budget. And hopefully we'll, we'll do quite well out of the Jag, which then should allow me to sell it and then buy something a little bit more expensive, maybe a Range Rover, maybe something else that we haven't seen on the channel before. But to answer your question, yes, I will 100%. I will 100% have another Range Rover. Love those cars. Will I be bringing my Jaguar S-Type to the next Jaguar Breakfast Club at the Motor Museum on the 7th of January? I think I will, actually. That sounds really fun. 9.30 a.m. on Saturday, the 7th of January. Next year, British Motor Museum, Jaguar Breakfast Club. I would absolutely love to go to that. So if that's an invite, I uh, you can count on me being there. I think I did try to come to one before, but the Jaguar broke down. So as long as the Jaguar doesn't break down, I will be at the British Motor Museum on Saturday the 7th of January. See you all there. Okay, well, I'll leave it there because I'm sure you've all got lots of leftovers to eat this evening. And if you're watching this at another time, you probably just don't want to sit and waste your life listening to me. So I will end this video now. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, I will say thank you for all the support this year, although I think there's going to be another video out before the new year. But yes, thank you so much for all the questions. Uh, it's always great fun answering them. And of course, if I haven't answered your question, do feel free to leave a comment on, on this video and I'll do my best to get back to you and maybe answer it down there. Thank you so much all and I will see you very, very soon.